Okay, so I've just put some um, fairly generic furniture into this space uh, just to get an idea about uh, rendering it. And then with the exterior, uh, you can use similar techniques. And again, I've just put some uh, generic uh, objects in there, some trees and some other things. So uh, something to think about before you even go into rendering is the um, graphics options that you have. And this is something I think where people create work for themselves and um, think that you always need to render when you can actually use the, the graphics tools. And so here I'm just in my exterior perspective going to adjust that view slightly to focus maybe more on the, the building. And I might go back into the site plan just to bring that car forward so that it's going to still appear in that view. And then back to my view there. So I've got maybe an exterior view that is working fairly well uh, to show that facade. And then if you click on the little uh, view, the uh, sorry, graphic display options button, which is the cube at the bottom of you. Uh, your, your view uh, and then go to graphic display options. There are a lot of options in there which will do similar things to rendering without you actually having to render. So one that is uh, a fairly new feature is sketch lines. So you can enable sketchy lines and play with those values to get a more sketchy appearance. It works really well with uh, hidden line actually. And I think it's actually in some ways better than the Illustrator uh, trace tool, image trace. It's definitely faster. And, uh, and so you can get uh, you know, a sketchy looking drawing without doing much work at all. So that's one option. And then you also have, if you go to lighting, uh, the ability to adjust the sun, ambient light and the shadows independently. So if I enable shadows up here, I'm going to go to cast shadows and also ambient shadows. And ambient shadows is something that um, can add a lot to these renders. So you can see there I've got a lot of depth happening. Again, still without doing any rendering. If I go to realistic, I'm going to keep that uh, sketch line and then also the ambient shadows are going to stay there. But now you can see maybe that these surfaces are a little dark. I can still go back into graphic display options and fine tune that. So I can go to lighting and then we can bring up the ambient light, which should make all of these surfaces that aren't receiving direct light lighter. You can also increase the sun to make the areas that are directly lit brighter still. And then the shadows, it goes the other way. So if you reduce that slider and make the shadows lighter, you can play with those things. And then if you go to photographic exposure, you can enable that, go to manual, and then use that slider to control the exposure overall, which can give you some really interesting effects. So you can see they're very different to the original realistic display. And uh, so, again, going back to the uh, sketch lines, maybe I wouldn't want those, so I can always just disable those to go back to a hard line display. Uh, you can also enable artificial lights in these shaded views. And uh, I don't have any showing here, but if I go into my interior, back to graphic display options, and then lighting, uh, and uh, so we've got to be on um, realistic and then I can change the interior scheme to maybe artificial only and then you see I do have some lights in here going to slow things down a bit but it should work in the end with the graphics cards we've got on these computers they can cope with this there we are so you can see there I'm showing the lights that I have in the scene. I've just got the lights down the hallway there. But notice it has slowed everything down quite a bit because it's using the 
graphics hardware on the computer. And it actually may be a little bit too much for this computer. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, or just here go back to interior uh, sun only. And then again I can still fine tune things so with say ambient light I can increase the uh, brightness. And again we can play with the photographic exposure control there. So you can do lots of things just with shaded views. You can of course still show your textures. Uh, without even rendering. But I, of course, want to look at rendering. So I'm just going to make it uh, have a texture on the ground floor so we can have that show up in the renders as well. So I'm just going to change my, um, my floor. Maybe actually I'll go into a section view and do that. Uh, so I sort of thought it's maybe a good chance just to quickly go over materials a little bit in Revit before I show you uh, how to do the same things with uh, 3ds Max. So I have a floor above my structure there, which has the floorboard material that I want to use. So if I go to edit type there and look at the material it's using, it's wood floorboards. So I, I want to have my concrete slab with the same material so I could just choose that same floor type, but that's of course going to make this floor the same thickness. So instead I'm going to go to oops, edit type, edit the structure, and insert a new layer. And so then when you're making layers, it's good just to remember which um, function to use. And have I shown you which function you should be using for your interior finishes. Remember which of these? So, okay, so you'll often need to make new layers for things like floors, walls, ceilings, roofs, they all use the same approach. And so you might see then you've got two different choices for finishes. And uh, so finish one is basically set up for exteriors, and then finish two is for interiors. And they need to be different because they'll join together. So if you have a, say, a render material that's wrapping around the outside of your building, around uh, on a wall, uh, that needs to join to the render on a wall that joins to it, and you don't want the plaster on the inside going through the wall and trying to connect to the render on the outside. So that's why you have those two different options for finishes. So for interiors, just use finish two. And then the thickness I'll make 20 mil. And I can match the material then really easily to the material that I used for the other floor because I know the name, wood floorboards. And that's really the secret to material management. It might make it clearer why you do all of that setup in your materials, both checking that the appearance and the graphics are set up properly and particularly making sure that the appearance isn't being used by other materials um, that you don't want uh, to change when you adjust the one that you're using. So there, making sure we've got the zero there if we want this to be a unique uh, appearance material. And now I can use that with any other floor. So I've got two completely different floors, one with concrete uh, underneath and one which is just the floorboards but they both use the wood floorboards material. And now going back to my interior view, I can see that clearly. Now if I wanted the boards to be rotated then I would need to make a different material but I'm happy with that angle, it's actually uh, structurally uh, correct. The boards would need to run across the joists in that direction. So I'm going to save the file and now we can have a look at um, rendering just quickly in Revit, fairly straightforward, I'm sure you're all used to these options. Um, and so I'm going to go to, ins well, starting with interior sun only. 
you can actually leave this rendering dialog open while you change view settings. So I can turn the shadows on and then I can see very clearly that I have quite a lot of sunlight coming into this space and so I should be able to render and have a decent amount of light. Okay, so it's rendering with, uh, again, the things in the foreground visible fairly clearly. If I go to adjust exposure, I could then maybe reduce the brightness of that area that's obviously overexposed in the foreground. Sorry, going to the right. But then the area in the background is going to be too dark. And vice versa, if I make the area in the background brighter, the area in the foreground is going to be too bright. So really the only solution that you have in Revit to make those areas more balanced is to try and use Sun and Artificial. So firstly I'll go to Artificial Only and do a render to see what the Sun, the Artificial Lights are doing by themselves. And that's always a good way to test things out. A lot of people go straight to Sun and Artificial before they know what the two different things are doing. And, and that's a common issue that I see all the time when people have problems with their rendering, not knowing what the artificial lights and what the artif um, sunlight is doing independently. Now you can see there, I've only got 21 lights but it's already rendering you know, fairly slowly. And the render speed is basically determined by the complexity of your geometry and the number of lights, as well as, of course, your quality settings. Your, your quality preset here and then your output settings, of course, increase the render time as well. But even on draft, which is very low quality, obviously, uh, the render is very slow now, or fairly slow, because of the number of lights. It's good to test your renders before you put too many lights in. That's what I'm doing here. So I've got enough lights now to be able to see these areas in the distance. But if I again go now to um, change the lighting setting and this time go to Sun and Artificial, then the sunlight is going to be much brighter than my interior lights. You can cheat and increase the brightness of the artificial lights, but I don't think that's a really viable solution because if you want to then render with the artificial lights on their own, do a nighttime render, you have to go and reduce the brightness of all of those lights again. And the, the point of using Revit is to have things set up uh, as, the, as they need to function in your design and then be able to extract all the information appropriately, including uh, rendered views showing the lighting. And you shouldn't have to fudge the lighting to achieve that. With the new Autodesk Ray Tracing Engine, it's a little bit better at this, but uh, Mentor Ray's always had this problem, balancing out sunlight and artificial light. It's a bit better, too bright in the foreground, but you'll see in the background we'll at least have a little bit more detail, but not enough. Okay, so you can see there, starting to get some um, detail in the background. This is very overexposed and um, if the reason it's a problem the reason that, that it's never really been fixed is because technically this is correct if you try to take photos uh, that show sunlight and artificial light 
this is pretty close to what you'll get. And uh, your eyes adjust constantly to compensate for this. But the camera won't. And um, I mean, just try taking a photo pointing at an artificial light. And you'll see that the light source itself is going to be overexposed if you have enough um, brightness to be able to see the rest of your scene. And you just take it for granted. In fact, I can show you quickly um, if you look at some, uh, some real estate photos of some real spaces. realestate.com uh, So, what's the suburb? Uh, I don't really care. Newtown? Oops. Oops, Newtown, there we go. And these are professional photographs. I guarantee you we'll find plenty that have overexposed areas. Shame it's loading slowly, thought these would be some of the quickest. Everything's running slowly today. Yeah, I'll just let that run. Oh, that's ridiculous. I've had a cable connection for too long and I'm just used to things working. It's crazy. Okay, let me just do another search. It's not that's happening. Okay, so here we are. So you can see, even with rendered images, you'll get this overexposed lighting all the time. I think that's unacceptable. I would never produce an image that has that. But it is a natural effect that you'll see all the time. In photographs, you tolerate it, but with 3D rendering, it's generally not something you would accept. Um, so let's see if we can find some others here. So again here, in photography, um, you know, it's just something that you, you accept because it is a natural effect. But, uh, but again, with 3D renders, you want to try and uh, reduce that or eliminate it altogether. So we can't have these overexposed areas. Uh, so one simple solution is, of course, just to render in the cloud. So I'm going to send this off to render in cloud. And um, so notice I've done the setup in the render dialog here. And you can even try on high quality up to medium. Shouldn't take that long to render. So do as much of the setup here as you can. Um, the resolution and the quality, you'll get a chance to choose when you render in cloud anyway. But uh, again, it can help just to check those. I'm going to send this off to render in cloud while I show you how to bring it into 3ds Max. Uh, you should do some rendering because otherwise you won't know what it's going to look like. Uh, so you need to test it and then it does use a lot of the settings that you put into that render dialog box. So that sun and artificial lighting option, for example, and a few other things that you set up in there, it'll use when you send it to rendering cloud. So you should definitely test it and get it working at least on a low setting uh, locally before you try using rendering cloud. And so now I'm going to just choose the options here. So you've got um, the options for output type, obviously. Vendor quality. Uh, standard is pretty good, but final is, is obviously better. And then the image size. So that's your resolution, essentially. Um, exposure, you can leave on advanced usually. And then the file format PNG is a really good option. Um, that's it. So I'm going to just start rendering and then I'll also go through the process to take that into 3ds Max once that's gone through. So it's very quick uploading it and then 
won't take long to, uh, to render. So it's missing some maps, but uh, these aren't being used, or I don't really care anyway if they are being used. So we'll click OK. And then continuing back there. Oh, because th it doesn't know where, the, where those files are. Um, so you just need to either go into the material and uh, point them to those image files. Or if you want to put all your images in one location, you can go to the main menu and then options. And then go to the rendering panel and add a path there. So, so it's on the main menu if you go to options. And then you go to rendering and then just click the plus there to add a path yeah. and you can have a folder with all the images uh, that you use. So you need to have the images but yeah. um, but if you've got them then you can so make sure that it'll find them. It yeah, yeah. So that saves you going through each material and pointing yeah. each one at, at that image. Um, so uh, so here though, I'm going to take this into 3ds Max now to try rendering it there and show you the basic approach. So you've got really two main approaches, well sorry three main approaches for bringing things into 3ds Max. You've got the sweet workflows option on the main menu and if you choose 3ds Max design interior rendering, it'll work really well at least the first time, but if you're planning on doing a lot of this, and you know that it's a long running project where you're going to need to keep updating things, then you might want to consider some of the other options. And I've done videos and I've got written notes on this as well to show you how to export manually to the, XP, uh, the FBX format or even occasionally you might want to use the old AutoCAD DWG format. And the reason is it's simpler It'll give you simpler geometry, which is sometimes better, and also uh, it'll take out some of the more advanced options like lighting, which can actually be an advantage. Uh, so some people do it like this all the time still because that's they're in the habit of doing it like that. And if you're coming from a program like Archicad, that's a really good option using the DWG format. It does work really well. But um, more and more these days, I'd say FBX is, is becoming the, the more common method. FBX is a newer file format and it allows you to use uh, or to import all of the things you've done in Revit, including lighting and the environment settings, so the background and things like that. Now, when you choose sweet workflows, it's automating that process, essentially. Okay, so I'm going to go again, 3ds Max Design Interior Rendering and just click run. But then before I choose an option here, in 3ds Max, I'm just going to make sure I've got a new file ready and waiting. So I'm going to custom go to the customize menu. Uh, oh, in fact, if you're wondering, I ca it came up with an option for the scene type when I started the program, and I just chose basic scene. And then under customize, if I go to unit setup, I'm going to make sure the display unit's on millimetres and system unit, I'm going to leave on one unit equals one inches. So that's ready. Now back into Revit and I can choose active max session and choose that untitled file that I've got open and continue. So there we are. So it's brought in the whole Max, no, sorry, the whole Revit file. So a really useful shortcut when you bring that in to get the camera view is C on the keyboard, and that will set the same camera view I had in Revit. And then it's not a bad idea just to understand how it works to try rendering just by clicking on the teapot. Click continue, and you'll see then that it will. Uh, ignore any uh, warnings and go through and render in a similar way to what I got in Revit or the way it was rendering, rendering in Revit. But notice there's one major difference 
Okay, I'll just show you that to compare. So this is the rendering I have in, have in uh, Revit. And you can see already that it's similar, but what's the big difference that we have there between the, the Revit version and the Max version? This is obviously still rendering, but you can already see the major difference. So there's the Revit, there's the Max one. It's much darker. Yeah. Now, that's not because there's a different amount of light, it's because the exposure level is different. It's just the exposure control. So that's usually the, the main uh, option you need to change when you in first import your file into 3ds Max. So I'll let it do the, um, the rest of the render here. That'll, that'll go through fairly quickly. While it's doing that, I'm going to check my um, render progress in Revit. Just using the link there on the menu in Revit. It's fairly easy. And so that's still rendering, but it's not far off. So notice the difference. I've got much more light in the background there and it's not overexposed in the foreground. And that's because the cloud renderer adds in light for you, which is extremely useful actually. So cloud rendering is always a good option. But you see when you do it with Max, you get even more control. Okay, so that's rendering away. And, uh, well, I know having seen the, the, uh, the progress, this is one difference you have between rendering with Max and rendering with Revit. With Revit, you don't see this. It still happens, but you just don't see that, um, that preview, that pass. And so I'm going to uh, just cancel that. I've seen enough. So I don't have to wait for it to finish rendering to see that level of lighting. I'm going to go to the rendering menu and then exposure control. And then firstly, you need to check that it's got uh, MR photographic exposure control. That's the one that you use in Revit as well. You just don't see the name of it there. And then you can even have a look in Revit to see with adjust exposure what the exposure value was there. So here you can see it's 10.1. Let's call it 10. So now in 3ds Max I can set the exposure value to the same and I'll even just do a render preview first so that I can see or so that I can show you the change as I adjust that exposure value. it's happening, you can see there that's done, but um, if I go to adjust exposure in um, Internet Explorer, it sometimes can cause some problems. You can see there it's not letting me change these values. So an, a useful option is to open your render your cloud render using um, Chrome. Chrome and Firefox generally work better. Um, oh, don't need to start getting this time in there. Okay, I just need to sign in again.
Okay, so there it is um, opened, but this time in Chrome. And now if I go to adjust exposure, you can see that I can adjust it there in real time from the browser. So that's a common um, issue people have when they go to adjust the, um, the renders in the cloud. So I can adjust the exposure value there. And you can see it works seamlessly as long as you open it with Chrome. Firefox as well will work, just not Internet Explorer. It's one of those things. Okay, so do you know how I switched over? I just used copy and paste, so you can copy and paste the link <laughs> from here, your, your address. Just copy that to the clipboard, go into Chrome, paste it in, and you can easily open up anything you've got in Internet Explorer using a different browser like Chrome. Firefox, and um, it, it's really important that you can adjust the exposure after you render. That's right, so going back into 3ds Max, still going with my preview, but it, just because I switched, it should wake up in a minute. There we go. Okay, so now if I bring that exposure value down to uh, 10, I'm going to get what I had in Revit, which we know was was too bright. So 10 was, was too low. If I bring that higher, you can see then the foreground is um, uh, a better lighting value. If I go even higher still, 12, yeah, maybe a little bit too high. So back to 11, that's probably what I want. And so I'll then see if my lights are turned on, if I go to the tools menu and then light lister, you can see that I've just got a few entries for lights. I've got the, uh, the sun and the sky, they're both light sources down the bottom. And then I've got two artificial lights. Now there are actually, uh, what is it, 16 of the, the one at the top, I can see over here, 16 lights selected by clicking on this button next to the tick there. And then the other one, I think there are only a few, yeah, so five there, which is, that's just part of my, um, the counter I've got at the back. But the important one is this round light. And uh, again, just wanted to make sure they're both turned on. So there you can see some of these lights. And so now if I go to uh, do a full, oh sorry, I'm uh, going to change the render setup. I could do a full render, but I don't want to uh, make you watch this. So I'm going to go to render setup and just change one of the settings I know needs to be changed. So uh, under global elimination, you can see there I've got final gather turned on. And it's going to increase the multiplier for that. So I'm going to make it, uh, let's make it all the way up to five. And that should give me more bounced lighting. And just so that it renders a bit quicker, I might actually go to uh, Exposure Control again and just do a render preview. It's going a little bit slowly, but that's just the way it is with rendering.
hope that's for us, but it doesn't work that well with Captivate for some reason. Actually, while it's happening, I can show you um, there's a really useful resource I've added to the um, folder on the P drive. So in um, the Revit library in the interior design folder there, I've added these extra shoe library folders which have more up-to-date versions of those. So there's a lot of handy uh, families in there. And so you have in the furniture folder, for example, lots of things that might be useful for this project. Um, workstations, uh, receptions, all kinds of things. Uh, the entourage folder there has quite a few things that you don't have normally, so extra people and things like that. Um, the vehicles are in a separate folder, so if you want extra cars, you've got quite a few there that aren't in the normal library. And of course, doors, windows, other things like that. They're never perfect, so if you want them to be fully adjustable, you'd need to do more work on them. But uh, if you just want a door that's that shape, uh, it's a really useful resource. Something I don't know people often find lacking in the normal library is the uh, shelving. So there's a whole folder for both things in the uh, furniture folder. Where did I see it? Sorry, it's there. I just for some reason can't see it here. Office. No, it was in here. Ah, oh, so bookcases and storage. There we are. So lots of shelves in there. They're a really easy family to make anyway, but um, again, it can save you. Oh, e yeah, of course, any of these files, yep, you can edit, absolutely. That's in shoe, so just in, uh, yeah, there's a few different versions, so, yeah. So in the Revit Lab. Oh, yeah, it's one of the teachers at Ultimo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yep. Architecture technology, yeah. Uh, which is now becoming uh, building design. They're turning it into a new course. So it'll be a... Um, oh, yeah, yep. So they use um, Archicad as well, kind of equally. So switching between Archicad and Revit. Oh, yeah, okay. So you can see there now that there's a lot more light in the, um, the dark or the areas that uh, were darker at the back there because I've increased the bounce lighting, and so the foreground isn't overexposed, but the back is, is lit reasonably well. So then, um, so I better just show you how to bring changes across. If I modify this model, so for example, I might want a, um, Uh, an opening at the back. So I'm going to duplicate this view. And 
just have these things hidden. Okay, so the same way I made the opening that I've already done, I can add in a new profile. Maybe I'll take this one to the ground. Actually, I'll leave it like that. So, okay, so I've got my simple change there, which I should be able to see in the perspective view, just, that I can see it. Okay, so then I can um, save this file, and then to relink it, go back to the sweep workflows, for this max interior rendering. Now, what I might do before that is just save this max file and you can see then it's defaulting to a folder that I've set up previously so it'll help you a lot if you have things organized in the same folder so I'm going to make a um, well it's a bit of a funny process I'm going to make a project folder using max using that project folder button so it's just up on the um, quick access toolbar. So I'll just use the George Street folder and then I'll make a new folder in there, 3D model. It's a bit fiddly, you've got to sometimes just force it to there we go, force it to find it. And so make sure that name comes up. And then when you go to save as in Max, you should see it go to that project folder. And so we'll call this um, George Street uh, Max file. And now using Revit, I'll save it into that project folder. So like it's a funny process because you make the project folder in Max, and then you can go to uh, Revit and save there as well. So I can go to Import here and just save the folder there, uh, save the file there. You can even make a Revit file uh, folder there if you like. But import's okay, so we can just save it there. So now if I go to Sweet Workflows again, 3ds Max Design Interior Rendering, run, Active Max Session, choose the file I've already chosen and make sure existing links is set to will be updated. Continue. So then, uh, actually it's a bit hard to see there, but if I go to the exterior view, you can see it's brought the change in. Everything else has been retained. So, the final thing I'll show you there is that you can render in the cloud from 3ds Max.
So you can set the renderer there to, um, oh sorry, where is it again? Uh, sorry, the target to um, A360 cloud rendering mode. But it uses the options you have in maths, which is um, a big advantage. So here I can set a lot of these um, advantage, these are options in advance. So with the render quality, you can see you've got quite a few different options to what you get in, um, uh, in Revit. You can set the uh, image size and all those other things in advance as well and get a really good idea what those options are uh, going to give you in terms of the image size. Uh, Exposure you can just leave on advance and then output again to PNG. camera. There we So you might get warnings about texture maps not being compatible, but they should still go through if they're all of this materials. So yeah, so it's really useful actually to render solar studies out of Max, but then the uh, panoramas option also can give you some useful things. And if you uh, do a search online, you'll be able to find programs that you can download that are free that will let you record panoramas. So that way you can get something that looks like an animation, but um, is going to render in the time of a still image. And uh, that, that can be really effective. Um, are you pres doing presentations to external examiners for your final projects? External examiners? Or you, you, you are? Right, you're not sure. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Well, at least it's someone different. Um, and are you doing it in the boardroom? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yep. Now, at least um, if you're doing it with someone, and look, they they probably um, better in some ways. The um, the others can be pretty harsh, um, so uh, <laughs> that's not always pleasant. But um, are you doing it in the boardroom? No, not on my board. Right. Oh, right. Okay. So, you do you have a projector that you're going to use, or just boards? Right. Okay. All right, so now when they do in the bachelors, they do, uh, you know, full-blown presentations with um, mm. a board of, you know, several, usually three or four people, mm. and in the um, big boardroom with the big um, movie screen size projector, which makes a big difference. 
and so then it's nice to have it. In fact, they're required to have animation, um, but uh, you aren't at this stage. But if you're planning on doing the going on to do the sandwich course and finish and, and do a bachelor degree, um, that's something that they would have all done because in second year they do some um, animation. So uh, something to think about anyway. And there are easy ways of getting it out of Max. So here we go. Okay, so that's doing some really strange things, but uh, it probably will still render okay. But you get a preview with um, with, <laughs> with Max, which can be a good and a bad thing. Sometimes it's <laughs> going to uh, give you an idea, but in other cases it can be a bit worrying when you see this <laughs> the first time. Uh, anyhow, that that should still go through okay. Um, there are some compatibility issues though. And um, so just while that's happening, I can show you with uh, with 3 Max again, you have a few different engines to choose. So Mentor is good, but also the others, Quicksilver is interesting as well. So I'm just going to render there while that's happening and compare the two. You can see that going through fairly quickly there. Right, so the cloud is quick, but if you've got a fast computer, uh, it's not going to be much slower. And in some cases, it'll do a better job. Definitely get more control rendering locally, but um, you know, the cloud will still save you time. Uh, has anyone heard about Arnold or had a look at rendering with Arnold? Just that, yeah, so I mean V-Ray I think is still going to be the standard for a fair while. That's what I use and um, we were l really um, thinking hard about getting that on these computers but the rendering technology is changing so quickly that it just didn't seem worthwhile because um, Arnold is probably going to be the standard with Autodesk programs in the future and Arnold is probably a better option than V-Ray in the long run. It's just that it's uh, it's too early no, to be sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Autodesk had bought it so it was made by another company and uh, it's the standard now for film and, and a lot of other um, rendering and it's bundled with Maya now so if you want to try it, you can always just download Maya and um, bring your model from Max into Maya and, uh, and try out Arnold, which is a much simpler rendering engine to use than Mentoray. I don't think there's any cloud option as yet, but uh, you know, it's still it's a, it's a really good engine, so that's another one to think about. Okay, so I might not make you watch that finish because it's going to be a little while. I don't think it'll take 21 minutes as it says, but it's still going to take a while. This one though, you can see is going through a little bit faster. And um, you can see in the background that is uh, getting a bit more light, but I'd probably have to increase that even more. <coughs> 